In the mid-1990s, gaming made that scary jump into the third dimension and had no intention of looking back. For quite some time following that leap, 2D platformers along with many other 2D genres took a back seat as developers and consumers looked to the future, embracing the possibilities of a whole new dimension. Sometimes though, that third D is just one D too many. We've learned in recent years that 2D platformers have a lot to offer the modern gaming world, and many of those classics from yesteryear still hold up beautifully today. Of course, Mario's 8 and 16-bit outings are the most iconic, but we're graciously putting him aside for today as we look at stellar 2D platforming experiences that don't involve the portly plumber or any of his long list of friends. That means you won't be seeing Donkey Kong or Yoshi here either, which is good, because those two could probably fill a list of great games of their own. They could, to be clear. No, instead we will put aside Mario and Mario-adjacent heroes to shine a spotlight on the rest of 2D gaming's best and most brilliant, as we look at examples of the genre new and old that don't star the world's most famous princess saving tradesman. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 great 2D platformers that aren't Mario. Number 10. Rayman Legends Rayman is a bit of an enigma. He's been around since 1995, has starred in both 2D and 3D adventures, and has almost 50 games to his name. Somehow, though, he doesn't have quite the iconic status or pop culture clout that you might expect from such an industry mainstay. Also, no one knows what he actually is. Some kind of limbless horse boy is my guess. He shows up in some great games though, and Rayman Legends, originally released in 2013, is probably the best of the bunch. In the game, Rayman and his pals, Glowbox and Murphy, have to save the ten princesses from an evil magician who is split up into five entities known as Dark Teensies. No, it doesn't make much sense to me either, but as long as it gets the little guy jumping. Rayman Legends also allows for up to four players to play simultaneously, so it's a great one to bring out when you've got some pals over. You can even control various secondary characters including Glowbox, the Teensies, and a barbarian princess called Barbara? I wonder if they could be related. Number 9. Spelunky Although initially released in 2008, Spelunky feels like it's been around since the dawn of gaming. This is mostly due to the fact that it was heavily inspired by 1983's Spelunka, and it captures the simplicity of those early days of platforming in general. Explore, collect, save damsel, repeat. No emotional plot twists here, it's just someone in a cave looking for treasure, just like real Spelunking. Despite the simplicity of its premise, Spelunky is not a pure platformer. It was one of the first 2D side-scrollers to introduce roguelike elements to the gameplay, most notably procedurally generated levels. Expect your platforming skills to be tested by new layouts and trap locations each time you descend into caves filled with bats, snakes, ghosts, and all that other stuff that real-life spelunkers deal with on a daily basis. Certainly, for sure they do. The game is tough, too, despite its cutesy and friendly appearance. Even early levels have the potential to quickly wipe out the unprepared. Luckily, our intrepid explorer has a limited number of bombs and can use these to blast his own path through the cave and monsters alike. I'm learning so much about Spelunky today. Number 8. Rocket Knight Adventures it could be argued that Sparkster is the unsung hero of 16-bit mascot platformers. Despite starring in the excellent Rocket Knight adventures, he seems to get less recognition nowadays than even the likes of Bubsy, and it's a shame, really. He's an opossum in a suit of armor with a jetpack strapped to it. What is not to love? Konami's Rocket Knight Adventures was released in 1993 for the Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis, if you want to get <laughs> about this. It starred the aforementioned metal-clad marsupial as he attempted to save a peaceful kingdom from an unsettling army of steampunk pigmen. The game is bright, bold, and brimming with personality as Sparkster explores woods, mines, and castles. Unique bosses and memorable set pieces made for a consistently exciting experience that was enjoyed by critics and fans alike. Incidentally, did you know that opossums are able to play dead as a way of defending themselves against predatory animals? Probably. But did you also know that in order to fully complete the effect, the opossum secretes a putrid corpse-like smell from its bottom? Try looking at Sparkster the same way now. You're welcome. Number 7. Ori and the Blind Forest Ori and the Blind Forest is a 2D platformer with Metroidvania elements. Players guide titular forest spirit Ori, a glowing cat bunny thing, as he acquires the abilities and upgrades needed to unlock different areas of the world. What a world it is too, with level design, artistry, and music that beautifully evokes the feeling of secluded, ancient, and mysterious woods. It's not all pretty glades and birdsong, though. The forest has been devastated and withered by a cataclysmic event, and Ori has to put things right, all while avoiding poisonous water, deadly plants, and tainted creatures. The most dangerous and terrifying of these creatures is Kuro, a giant, murderous owl that will chase Ori through heart-racing set pieces intent on destruction. If you thought owls were cute, this game lets you see things from the perspective 
perspective of a field mouse. Ooh. Ori and the Blind Forest sold well enough to secure a sequel, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. We went with the first one for this list, but the second game is just as magical, so check that one out too. What exactly is Ori, though? A fox? A monkey? Some kind of albino newt? I give up. Number 6. Super Meat Boy 2010's Super Meat Boy is a great game that clearly came from a deeply disturbed mind. The hero of the piece is a sentient slab of meat. You want to know what kind of meat? Well, I think some questions are best left unanswered. His girlfriend, Bandage Girl, has been kidnapped by Dr. Fetus. It's got a style of its own. Also, Meat Boy leaves trails of blood on every surface he touches. Delightful. Putting all of this uh, quirkiness aside, Super Meat Boy was lavished with critical praise upon its release. Definitely one for those who like a challenge, Super Meat Boy requires pixel-perfect jumping skills and features such hazards as rising lava, flying projectiles, sinister enemies, and more. With its devilish trickiness and instant restarts, Super Meat Boy will really tap into that just-one-more-go mentality. And as such, expect to lose many an evening with your little meaty friend as you attempt those tricky gauntlets over and over again, finally going to bed with visions of flying meat and blood-splattered saw blades going through your head. It's a perfectly healthy lifestyle, I assure you. Number 5. Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse Back in the 90s, Disney was scattering top-quality 2D platformers like confetti, whether it was a side-scrolling reimagining of one of their blockbuster movies or an iconic character on a jet-setting adventure. More often than not, you could expect it to be a shining example of the genre. As such, it was difficult to choose just one, so we decided to toss all of that Disney magic and platforming goodness into a big old cauldron and boil it down into its purest possible form. What we're left with is the famous mouse himself embarking on a picturesque side-scrolling adventure. Castle of Illusions starring Mickey Mouse saw the ultimate corporate mascot take on tricky jumps and devious bosses on the way to save Minnie from the clutches of an evil witch. Issuing the crushing difficulty of many contemporary platformers, Castle of Illusion instead provides a more manageable experience, meaning kids and adults alike have a chance of seeing the ending and squeezing out every last drop of that lovely Disney magic. Its charming visuals and animation set the tone for countless platformers that followed it. Yes, it might stick to that old 2D platformer formula, walk left to right, jump around a bit, stomp on cutesy enemies. But if it works, it works, and by Walt Disney's cryogenically frozen remains, this one works. Number 4. Braid Mixing in a healthy dose of puzzles, Braid is one of those platformers that tries to make you think. Not just with its time-rewinding brain benders either, Braid's themes and story twists will fill your mind with thoughts, some of them unwelcome. That's why it's such an indie darling, and is indeed viewed as one of the major catalysts for the burgeoning indie scene today. At first glance, the platforming looks fairly standard. Hop across gaps, bop enemies on the head, all that lovely platformer stuff. Then, player character Tim starts to break the established laws of time and you realise that you're no longer looking at a simple Mario clone. These time powers leads to a large amount of interesting gameplay, from simply rewinding time to retry mistimed jumps to exploiting elements that react to temporal manipulation in different and surprising ways. Also, what initially appeared to be a basic damsel in distress storyline is turned on its head as the realisation slowly dawns that our friend Tim may not be the harmless little chap that he first appears to be. We all like to think we're the hero, but what? if we're actually the villain in someone else's story. That's enough from you, Braid. I wasn't planning on looking inwards and reassessing myself today. Let's move on. Number three, Limbo. Dark, disturbing, ambiguous, and having absolutely nothing to do with shimmying beneath a bar suspended by two poles, Limbo is about as far away from the stereotypically colourful mascot platformer as you can get. Players enter a dark, colourless world as they take on the role of a nameless boy searching for his lost sister, and there's more going on here than meets the eye. The creepy visuals and off-putting sounds make for an uncomfortable experience as the boy is hunted by mysterious assailants and forced to overcome gruesome traps. Most of them are near impossible to detect for first-time players and will result in a sudden and sickening demise as the boy is crushed, impaled, maimed, or electrocuted in various upsetting ways. It's dark stuff, and not just because everything looks like some kind of creepy shadow theatre. I definitely wouldn't recommend it to arachnophobes, though. The gruelling, up-close, and visceral encounter with a giant spider might just make you lose your lunch. Number 2. Celeste in the real world, Mount Celeste is a mountain on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. It's a difficult hike, but it's very pretty, surrounded by tall pines and capped with glistening snow. It's not, as far as we're aware, littered with deadly spike traps, temples, and vast cave systems, and also sprinkled with tasty collectible strawberries. In 2018's critically acclaimed Celeste, players take control of Madeline and are tasked with climbing a fictionalized version of Mount Celeste, which definitely does have all of the aforementioned features and more. Stupid real-world mountains and their lack of strawberries 
This is why I don't bother hiking, you know, that and, you know, like being inside is nice and fun and safe. In Celeste, Madeline's efforts to scale the mountain are hampered by an antagonistic version of herself officially known as Part of Me, although the internet has given her the far superior nickname of Badalyn. Well done, internet. Proceed despite Badalyn's best efforts and you'll be treated to an excellent 2D platforming experience in which Madeline confronts her inner demons of anxiety and depression. The game also features impressively tight and satisfying gameplay too. What else do you want? A universally lauded, inspiring and varied soundtrack? Okay, well it's got that as well. Alright, Celeste, no one likes to show off. Number 1. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 here he is, the blue spiky boy himself. We tried to talk about Sonic earlier in this list, but he got away too fast, you see. Emblematic to this day, Mr. The Hedgehog is the only character ever to seriously threaten Mario's throne. Each of his mainline 2D appearances, from Sonic the Hedgehog way back in 1991 to Sonic Mania as recently as 2017, are fast-paced, brilliantly poised platform adventures deserving of a place on this list. We had to choose just one, though, and we went with Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Introducing Tails to the mix, the second outing for the speedy woodland critter was iconic in every way, from bopping your first badnik in the Emerald Hill Zone to taking on Robotnik's giant egg robot aboard his Death Egg space station. Differentiating itself from Mario's efforts with a spikier attitude, spectacularly varied levels and breakneck speed, the peak 2D Sonic games were meticulously crafted roller coaster rides, with things sometimes getting so fast the camera had trouble keeping up. Most of us will probably agree that Mario has Sonic beat hands down when it comes to 3D adventures. When when it comes to the 2D games, though, the race is much tighter. We're taking Mario entirely out of the spotlight today, however, so Sonic has a chance to shine, and he's never shined brighter than he did here.